Hello there geeks and gamers, I'm Mark the Cyborg, and this is the first in a new series of videos where I'll be talking about the games I'm currently playing which I think you might enjoy. These will not be full reviews, just quick impressions of games which I want to highlight to the gamers amongst you to put them on your radar, or in some cases, back on your radar. So without further ado... Ori and the Blind Forest is a beautiful action exploration puzzle platformer with an incredible minimalist story. After the introduction sequence, you take the role of Ori, who is an adorable cat-like creature, or squirrel thing. Basically a white Baby Yoda, if Baby Yoda was amazing at parkour, on a quest to restore life to her forest. Joining you on your quest is a being called Sian, who acts as both your guide and your weapon. In order to achieve her goals, you must control Ori through a series of incredibly challenging platform jumping puzzles. As you progress through the game, you will unlock new abilities which, like many other games in the Metroidvania genre, give you access to new areas as well as let you uncover previously inaccessible secrets in areas you've already explored. The thing that Ori and the Blind Forest does particularly well, arguably better than any other game I've ever played, is force you to utilize every one of your traversal abilities in order to solve the puzzles, including thinking of creative ways to combine different abilities. For example, like many other games in the genre, you do eventually acquire a double jump. Shortly after that, you acquire the ability to thrust off certain enemies and projectiles in midair. This move resets your double jump, and there is no limit to how many times you can use it, so while a puzzle may seem like it would be impossible without the ability to fly, once you have a feel for these abilities, you'll find you've got the next best thing. All of the required abilities are given to you throughout the course of the game's critical path, but there are optional abilities and skills which you can also earn. Defeating enemies gives you experience points, which grants an ability point when you collect enough of them. You can spend these points on three separate skill trees. There is a combat tree which gives your attacks a longer range, faster speed, or more power, a navigation tree which gives you better mapping abilities that let you find secrets more easily, and a defensive tree that can let you drop save points more often, breathe underwater, and earn a sweet, sweet triple jump. The puzzles themselves are not without their creativity, with one area giving you an item which shifts gravity, forcing the controls to stay relative to Ori. This puts your brain in a position where it has to quite literally remember which way is up in order to guide Ori to the area's keys. It sounds confusing, and, and well it is, but it's also very interesting. The difficulty in the game appears to reach ludicrous levels at times, but if you pay attention to your surroundings, think about where you need to go, and remember all of the abilities and tools at your disposal, no obstacle in the game is impossible to overcome. Death will happen often, but like the game which inspired Ori's developers, Super Meat Boy, resetting after death is instantaneous and the save system is forgiving without ever being too easy to abuse. There are sections in the game that have you race against the clock in the form of either a natural disaster or an enemy chasing you, and these certainly border on frustrating at times, but the quick reloads after death allow you to download the necessary patterns into your muscle memory quite easily. So while it might seem aggravating to finally get past a part of these time puzzles which you've been stuck on for a while, only to get stomped by the very next element and have to do it all again, it isn't long before you'll be effortlessly rushing through that first obstacle because your brain and hands just kinda know what to do. The game's story is simple and told with very little text, but that doesn't stop it from being incredibly strong. I don't want to go into detail about it here, as experiencing it for yourself will be far more impactful, but suffice to say it managed to get both tears of sadness and joy out of this cold, cybernetic heart. I know now why you cry. Ori and the Blind Forest was developed by Moon Studios and is available on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, Steam, Windows 10 Store, and where I played it, the best PC storefront of them all, CD Projekt's DRM Free GOG. Toss a coin to your the long-awaited sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, that's a tough thing to say, is launching on February 11th, so you've still got time to play through the original, and hey, if you're going to be playing it for the first time, you personally won't have to await very long for it. While new release games are exciting, there are so many incredible games which people just don't talk about very much anymore, so what I intend to do with this series is shine a light on games which are probably more affordable and worth just as much of your time and attention as a full price $60 AAA title. And they're $80 in Canada, because the universe hates Canadians. If you did like it, smashing the old melee button would be appreciated, and feel free to join me in the comments and tell me about the games that you've been playing. Once again, I'm Mark the Cyborg, and you are beautiful. Hey, this is Jay with Geeks and Gamers with a special announcement. 
Over the past few years, several of us have been trying to complete a home that will house orphans and displaced children in the country of El Salvador. We were hoping that this home would be finished by the time Christmas rolled around in 2019. Unfortunately, we did not meet our goal to complete this home. Partnering with Jeremy and all of us here at Geeks and Gamers and with you, we are setting up a GoFundMe to raise some funds that hopefully will help us get closer to our goal in completing this home. We will use the money to hire professionals to check out the home and also pay for some educational costs for many of the children. This will help with the burden of those raising money and more money can be put into this home to be completed. Me and several staff members from Geese and Gamers will be traveling to El Salvador at the end of May that we can bring a significant amount of money to finish this project. We hope that you would want to partner with us in this as well. So please click on the link, read about it, and do the best that you can. Thank you so much.